Hello, Marcel here to show you how to use multiple operators to modify different parts of the same hairstyle through using Ornatrix strand groups. As always, we'll be using our man head model created by Sergey Krikalev, and we have an existing scalp mesh to which I'm just going to add a quick fur ball groom which is going to basically create a bunch of operators and assign them to the scalp. I'm going to remove some of these operators right off the bat because we don't need them and I'll be putting them back on as we go along. So at the very base we have our guides from mesh operator which I'm going to use to reduce the length of our hairs initially and then above that we have the edit guides shape. So in Ornatrix we have something called strand groups which is basically an index that you can assign to each different guide and this index will be propagated up the evaluation stack and it can be used to selectively affect different parts of your hair with separate operators. There are a couple of ways of setting the strand groups and one of them is by using the edit guides shape operator and to demonstrate this I'm first going to reduce my hair count just so we have a few less guides to work with and it's more manageable and then I'm going to go into my edit guides shape and I will go into the root mode so we can select individual roots and assign our strand strand groups to these roots. Strand groups in edit guides are specified through a strand channel on which we have a separate video covering this topic pretty well. To review a little bit, the channels can be created by using this little channel attribute group over in the attribute editor. By default there is only one channel called selection and this channel contains the selected indices of our guides and we can add more channels. So to be able to specify strand groups we need a special channel which is called groups and it is pretty important that you give it this exact name name groups and nothing else. It is also case sensitive. So I'm going to create this channel called groups and now for this channel we can assign integer values for different hair strands on our character. So I'm going to select this side of the hair over here and I'll select my groups channel and set its value to 1. Note that the default value is 0, so 0 essentially is the base group for all of the strands. Next I'm going to invert my selection just so we can ensure that all of the strands that are not selected here are now going to be selected and I'm going to set the group value for these channels to 2 and then I'm going to select some of the other hairs on the other side and I'm also going to change the value for these strands to 1. So now we have three groups. We have a group of 1 applying to this side of the hair, we have a group of 1 applying to this side and down the middle we have a bunch of strands that have a channel 2. So what we can do now is add operators on top of our edit guides shape and use the different group values to modify various parameters of our guides. For example, let me add a curling operator and inside here you can see that we have a little group ID parameter. By default it is set to zero and whenever you have a group ID set to zero it will apply to all of the strands by default. However, if I change this value to one you can see that now it just applies to the strands on the side of the character, the ones that we have marked with a group value of one. Let's change the magnitude of this to something bigger so we can see the effect that that this operator will have. Now let's add another node and make it curl node as well and this time I will set my group ID to 2 and as I change the value you can see that it's just editing the curling for these strands down the middle of the character, the ones that we marked with a group value of 2 and I'm going to set a really big magnitude just so we can see the effect of this and maybe change some other parameter like the phase of the curl or something else, it doesn't really matter. So the basic idea that I wanted to show here is that we have two separate curl nodes but each one of them is operating on its own set of strands. So next thing I can do is add our hair from guides modifier to generate our dense hair and then on top of that I'm going to add a render settings operator. And again the render settings operator by default has a strand group of zero which means it will apply to all of the strands regardless of the group that is assigned to them. However if you want to, to apply to very specific strands for example the first group that we have marked our guides on the sides to be I can change the strand group to one and now you see that it's no longer affecting the guides down the middle and just the hairs on the sides are accepting the width that this operator is providing. So I can demonstrate this by just reducing the width for them and another important thing to note is that because because we have a hair from guides node before this, we are converting our guides into dense hair and therefore this shows that these group parameters are being passed from the guides that we specified them on onto the dense hair that gets generated from these guides. So I 
again, I can add another render settings node on top of this. And this time in this render settings node, I'll change my strand group to two. And now we're just affecting the strands down the middle. And the cool part is because this operator is entirely separate from our other render settings node, we can change all kinds of parameters that are specific to this operator, such as the curve along the strand length, and it's going to be unique to this specific strands. This kind of workflow is very cool if you are doing something like feathers and you want, for example, feathers down the neck of the character to be a little bit smaller and maybe a bit thinner or have a different curve to them than the feathers that are, say, at the back of the character or covering its body. So you can easily pop out this little curve diagram here and maybe provide a feather shape. And now we essentially have something that looks like feathers down the middle of our character's head and something that looks more like hairs at the sides of the character. And I can add as many of these operators as I deem necessary and each one of them can be operating on its own group and I can mix and match the effects that get applied using each one of the Ornatrix operators that are parametrically styling my hair. So this is only one way of specifying the strand groups by doing it explicitly inside the edit guides shape. There are multiple other ways to do it in Ornatrix and we're going to cover just one more way of doing it in this tutorial. The second way of specifying groups is through mesh strips which we have also covered in a separate tutorial. So if you're using mesh strips on a character to generate some hairs using the hair from mesh strip operator, which is done pretty easily by selecting your mesh and then using this button on the shelf over here. You can now go into the mesh strip editing tool and I can select the individual strips and assign strand groups to this specific strip that I have selected. So if I go down into my selected mesh strips setting rollout here, I have a little group per strip parameter and by default again it's zero because zero is the default group. But I can set this to a different value like one or any other group index that I choose and then it will apply only to this specific group. So let's get these two front strips to be number one and group number two and see how we can apply different effects to the specific hairs in these strips. So once I've done this, I have my render settings node, which is applying the global render settings because it uses strand group zero. So I'm going to add a couple more render settings node, one for each one of these front hairs and then the other one for the rest of the hair. So overall, I'm going to have three render settings node present in my stack. And previously, these three render settings node wouldn't do anything because the one on the top would override the settings from the one on the bottom. But now I can go to one of this render settings node and assign a different strand group value of say one and just control the thickness of these hairs that are belonging to this strip and then for the other one I can set the strand group value to two and just change the thickness or maybe the curve for the other hair strip that we have over here. And just like before, this doesn't only apply to render settings node, but any operator that Ornatrix provides, for example, I can use a frizz node and just apply it to the hairs that belong to group one. And in this case, it's just going to frizz these hairs over here. Then I can have another frizz node that applies to the rest of the hairs and maybe then can even add some frizz on top of a group one if I have the group ID set to zero. So again, this demonstrates how we can set groups for the hairs generated from mesh strips and in a future tutorial we will cover some other ways of specifying groups for specific strands in your hairstyle. Strand groups along with strand channels are a great way to allow you to have great parametric control over your hairs that flows down the operator stack and control various aspects of the operators present inside of it. I hope that you can find a lot of value in using these aspects that are unique to Ornatrix and use them to enrich your your hair, feather and fur making skills. Thank you very much.